Hi, I'm Zen, and welcome to this video on how to install and set up Laravel, a free and portable solution for local development and especially web development. And if you haven't already worked it out, I am a huge fan of it. So let's get into it. First off, if you're already using my Sempen USB drive solution or are planning to use it, that already has Laravel installed, so you don't need to watch this video at all. Also, this is a Windows only solution. So if you are a Mac head or a Linux buddy, XAMP might be your better solution. Also, if you have no idea of my Pentend solution, then first of all, how very dare you. But see the link in the description and there should be a card appearing in the top of a playlist of it. About now, now, maybe now, is it now? Is it there? I can't see it. I'll put it in later, so hopefully it's there. So check it out. It's all freeware. I don't make a penny for uh, providing it. It's just there to help you guys out. Next, why do we want or even need Laragon? This requires a little bit of explanation, so please bear with me. But feel free to skip ahead to the time you see on your screen uh, if you're not bothered. Still here? Cool. Okay then. So web development is a huge topic, far larger than what most people think. To oversimplify it, we can cast people into three separate categories, front-end and back-end and full-stack developers. Front-end developers mainly concentrate on the design of the website, its interactivity, what people will think of the UI and UX development. So a skill set that focuses on HTML, CSF, and JavaScript. These people tend to still be technical normally, but have a strong artistic flair. And I'll be honest, that's something I wish I had. Backend development deals with the bits people don't see. They're kind of like the unsung heroes. They are crucial to the running of the site. They deal with things such as web server configurations, including the installation of the operating system, the applications, the frameworks, and the databases. These people deliver the dynamic content to the front end. Here, there are so many different applications and solutions, it is mind numbing. A classic configuration you'll hear is the LAMP stack, which stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, which are the operating system, web server, database, and server-side code that's being used. However, there are loads more. Some places still use ASP, a Windows-based server-side code, but Node.js and Dino have become huge in the last few years, as well as a lot of NoSQL databases such as MongoDB, to name but a few. And then we have the full-stack developer, which is essentially someone who can do both, or at least most, aspects of both sides so they are really a front end and a back end developer if you're new to web development and you're watching my videos relax and take a breath rome wasn't built in a day and you aren't expected to know or be able to do everything right away it can take years just to master a single discipline this being said it's always a good idea regardless of what area of web development you want to work in that you have some understanding of both sides Okay, if you're a full stack developer, yeah, kind of is your job, but you knew what I meant, so stop being picky. This means that even if you are a front end developer, which is what most people think about when they are thinking of being a web designer, you need to understand some of the server side stuff. You'll definitely need to know, for example, how to take the dynamic data from, say, PHP and present it within your website. This means you need a web server. Of course, you could buy an online package from well-known places like INS and GoDaddy, but these cost money. So you think, well, I have a PC or a laptop or a MacBook. Why not just install the software in there? Sounds like a good idea, but wait, there's danger ahead. Just think what a web server is. It is an application running on your computer designed to listen to and respond to requests on the internet. And you want to install that on your own computer with all of your sensitive personal information and no idea how to configure it, then your bank account will be as empty as mine. This is where Laragon comes into the rescue. Laragon, like XAMPP, are web servers that are safe. They don't mess about with your firewall. They don't broadcast to the internet or even listen or respond to the internet. They are designed to be localized web servers only. They only listen and respond to requests coming from your machine. A nice, safe, and free environment to learn how to code and develop work prior to deployment. Laragon is also portable, so you can install it on your PC, whack it on a pen drive, like I have, so you can work wherever you are. In fact, 
It's only the purpose of this video that I'm installing Aragon onto my PC since I always run it from my pen drive. Okay, time to do it. First thing we need to do is go to the Laragon website, which is laragon.org. Okay, and you'll get this lovely screen here. And then we need to click on the download link. Now here we have three options. Okay, we have Laragon Full, we have Laragon Lite, and Laragon Portable. All three are absolutely fine. Interesting to note that even though the third one here, the Laragon Portable, is the only one that's really designed to work on pen drives, I have found personally that all of them do. In fact, I have Laragon Full installed on my pen drive system. The only time I've had issues with the full version on the pen drive was on new builds, where the machine had not had any updates. This is because Laragon relies on some direct link libraries found in the Microsoft Visual C++ distribution packs, which are needed for things such as Microsoft Office and I think the Steam Engine. So most computers will already have these installed and they're free to install these distributions. So I'm going to install the full version here for my computer. So I'm going to click on the link. Unfortunately, it is hosted on SoundForge, sorry, SourceForge. I don't know why I call it SoundForge, I always call it SoundForge on SourceForge, and you can see it's downloads. Sometimes you will find that it doesn't download right, okay? You know, it just freezes. So you can just refresh it or choose where it's coming down from and it tends to work fine. So we wait for it to download. You see, I've already done it once before. It's quite big, as you can see, 132 meg. So once it's downloaded, of course, all we need to do is to double click to start the installation. Now, my video is gonna bug out a bit here because it often sends up a, a UAC, a user access control, which stops all screen recorders that I'm aware of. So now we're back and we can see the standard sort installation. So we can just go, okay, assuming you want it in English. No, it tells you exactly what it's going to do. Say next. You can agree where you want to install it, just like you do any other program. Now, this screen is the only one where I say, if you are absolutely paranoid about security in your machine, then the auto virtual host is the one that you do not want to click. I do recommend having it run when Windows starts, but that's only if you're going to be working all the time on it. These uh, quick links are, of course, quite useful. So we press next, and we let it install. This will only take a couple of minutes, if that. When it has finished installing, it will normally ask you to restart the computer. So we should come back after the restart. So if you've allowed for the shortcut to be added, it'll come up here after you've restarted your machine. We click on it, up it comes, and this is what you get. Now it looks blank because we haven't done anything with it. And uh, what we need to do is to click the start tool to actually start up the web server itself, which is the Apache part. And we see we've got the uh, MySQL and PHP my admin being set up there as well. So what I want to do is to click on the cog here to go into the settings. This start all automatically option in the settings, I always recommend you run, okay? That just stops you having to press that start all button, okay? So when you start up Laragon, these will, services will start. That is different from start Laragon when Windows starts, which is just starting up this program. The one thing that you may want to change is the document route. The document root is essentially the folder in which Laragon says, this is where all your web files are. This is where I'm gonna be hosting. These are all the files that I can see. If they're outside of this folder, I cannot see them. Now, as you can see, it gives you a default root there of www folder in its own program folder. I personally keep all my files on my pen drive. And so I'm gonna change it to one of those files. And you can see it updates it there. Now. The other thing that you might want to enable, disable, it's up to you, is the virtual host thing. Like I said, this is the one thing that does add some changes to your system and you can't do it unless you have admin privileges. So if I just click it, I can show you basically what it does. Okay, now it will bring up a UOC, so it's just gonna, as you can see the, yep. And so when I close this down, we can see what it's done by right clicking, going to Apache, going to sites enabled and you can see these files are the ones that it has made okay so for example we click on there we can actually see the virtual host that it makes and that just means that you should be able to type in itw1.test on that website will come up but the truth is it's no biggie using it to be honest i used to use it a lot i don't use it anymore there's no need to the only other thing you might want to do here is the mail sender if you are practicing sending emails because obviously it doesn't have its own email system although online ones normally do so you just use your gmail address 
be able to do that. Same with actually receiving emails and the ports, but most of these you can leave alone. So now we'll just have a quick look at the links at the bottom. So the root one, like I said, it opens up what it considers your root, where all your websites will be. Terminal opens up a, as you can guess, a terminal. It uses its default one called Commander, but you can, if I remember correctly, configure it to whichever one you want it to be. Databases will open up the well, databases and you can also install stuff like PHP, MyAdmin and other database management systems. Web will open up your browser to your root so we can then go into it and we can open up the files. OK, and that is actually how you view your web pages on here. And of course, stop will stop all the services. If you want me to do a more in-depth thing, which will include looking at the right click of all the services that we've got here, please do ask me. Like I say, there's loads and loads of stuff in here about how to install different applications, how to install the frameworks, how to update the PHP that it's using, um, how to install, I don't know, such as Node.js and stuff like that. If that's something you're interested in, please put a comment in the video. And if I get enough people, which with my viewership means about three people, I will do a video on it. So the only other thing that we really need to cover here is actually how to close down Laragon. Because most people think just pressing stop here will be enough. It isn't. Stop just stops the services that Laragon's run. What you actually want to do is to right click on it and select exit. And that will close all the services down as well. And then it will close the program completely. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you for staying with me all the way. If there's a video that you want me to do, please let me know. If you want a shout out in one of my future videos, again, just put it in the comments. While you're here, why don't you do me a favor and click on that subscribe button because it really helped to promote this channel. I do read every comment, so please put stuff in there. If you think I've done something wrong, let me know. If there's something you want me to do, let me know. So I'll see you guys next time. This is Sen, signing off.